I'm gonna be honest, A Sentence of a Bookworm is not even close to the worst thing I've ever read, but I think it might be one of the most boring things I've ever read. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. I know the lighting is not great right now, but unfortunately that's the best I could do at the moment, so we'll just j just work with me, okay? Move to another tab and listen to the sweet sound of my voice if it bothers you. But So you might be familiar with Ascendance of a Bookworm from the uh, anime adaptation that was made, uh, I believe, last year. And before that, it was obviously a light novel, and this was a patron-requested review for me to go over the first uh, three volumes of it, I believe. And they're they're not pr that long individually. I think altogether they're like mm, 140,000 words-ish. So they didn't take me that long to get through. Oh, and in fact, I probably could have finished them all in one or two days if I was interested in them. But I just wasn't, because this series... While it has some stuff, I will admit, is pretty good, like it has some characters and character interactions that I think are well done, you know, they're not super cliched and they do have a little bit of personality to them. Uh, I like some of the world building that's there and the way it's introduced as well, because you really do feel like this is how an average person lives in this world, this isn't just how the kings and the heroes uh, and the rich people of the land live, this is how average folks live. I liked some of that, but there is... At first, basically no story, and even the end goal that they're working towards with the story, I just do not care about. And once, and admittedly, after a little while, they do bring in some other stuff, but I, I, I still don't care. I, I just don't. And there's not really any, like, action or anything. There's no, there's nothing there that intrigues me personally. Like, there's no intrigue, there's no big questions that we need answered, there's no uh, bigger goal or conflict that it's working towards, really. It's just, this person wants to read books. So the plot of this series is very, very basic. It's basically this uh, Japanese woman who was uh, 22 years old and who was a major bookworm, you know, she, just lit, she was a librarian and just read all the time, that's all she did. She dies in a freak accident and then is reincarnated into the body of a uh, five-year-old girl in this other dimension. And this other dimension is a place where magic is real, but technology and everything is at, like, a medieval level, so she doesn't have books there and she's sad. And then she decides, well, if this is my new lot in life, I'm just gonna try and make books. And so that's what she does. And the thing is, paper and ink and all that is prohibitively expensive back then, and so she has to try and find new ways to make stuff that she can write with, and it's, um... I mean, I get what she's going for there, and I do feel kind of bad for her at first, because the situation she's in is, again, she's just some peasant girl living in basically a shitty medieval city, but I... I don't care that much, is the thing, and I never did. Like, uh, the, I don't remember what her Japanese name was, I know they say it once or twice, but her name in this world is Mine, so that's what she usually goes by, and Mine, I mean, she's kinda nice and cute and stuff, and she's not a total self-insert, and I'll admit that's a positive, but she's just, um, I, I just can I hate to repeat myself so much, but I just cannot bring myself to care that much about how she can't read books and how she's willing to go to all of this trouble just to j just to get something to read, and in the process of doing so, she actually, actually winds up uh, increasing the technological level of this place that she lives in, and she actually makes money off of it later on, but like, I, God, I just don't care that much. You know, and admittedly, after a little while, it does, the story does go into a little bit of a different direction, and other stuff starts happening, so that's a little bit more interesting, but I... I just cannot bring myself to get invested in this sort of thing. Like, most of the characters aren't really that interesting. Like, m mine is fine, but all the rest are just sort of blank slates. They're boring, very blank slates. And part of the reason for that, I think, is just that I don't like the way light novels are written. Like, they come with illustrations, usually, and they're usually written to be extremely bare-bones in their description and their dialogue and everything. Like, whenever there's a fight scene you in these sorts of things, usually, it's just, there was a fight scene, it was really hard, and then I won, and I'm 
I I'm really not exaggerating when I say that. They are absolute bare bones, which is why they're called light novels. And even though the few that I've read, some of them have had really, really grand, neat ideas and stuff, they have almost never b dragged me in because I just can't get into that writing style. And part of it might just be translation issues, I understand that, because they're written in Japanese to begin with, but the fact of the matter remains that I just don't like the way they're written. I don't have a whole lot else to say about the series itself, but what I will say, real quick, is that I totally, totally understand the appeal. Like, it's kind of hard to explain if you aren't someone who's read a lot of light novels or someone who is a fan of anime, but basically, a shitload of anime are based on light novels, which means that the light novel industry has gotten bigger. Or actually, it might have been the other way around. They might have gotten bigger and then anime started being coming out, started coming out that were based on them. But the point is that with anything successful, eventually you get your own set of tropes and everything that sort of subsume the entire, well, not really genre, but it just subsumes everything. And in the case of light novels and their anime adaptations, we have this thing called isekai. Now, isekai just means another world, and basically, we, we have that sort of story in the West, too. Like, Chronicles of Narnia is basically an isekai story. It's about a character, usually a kid or a teenager, or a group of kids or teenagers, who just get taken to some other world, and it might be magical, it, it might be sci science fiction type thing, but the point is, it's some other place that they're taken to, and then they go on adventures in that world. And with uh, the isekai specifically, the isekai boom, it they're basically all the same. It's a little difficult to explain, but again, if you are a fan of anime and you see a teenage boy who gets taken to another world and he is just an instant, overpowered, magical badass who doesn't have to work for anything, and then he also gets a harem of beautiful women who are fawning all over him, and then he goes off and has cool adventures because he's just such a chad that he gets to defeat the demon lord or whatever. Now, that has been done a million and one times. So, any deviation from that formula, I can understand why people would want that. So with something like Ascendance of a Bookworm, where instead of a teenage boy, it's an adult woman who gets put into the body of a little girl, and instead of going on big grand adventures, she just wants to read books, and instead of being this major badass, she's just a regular person, and she's just sort of living well, it's often called slice of life in anime speak, but I don't know if there's really a term for it in the West, but it is basically what it sounds like. It's a slice of life. It's just someone living their lives. They're usually more character-driven rather than plot-driven, and it's just usually a sort of cozy comfort food type thing. Like, you don't have to think that hard about it. You can just sort of smile when happy things happen to them and get a little bit sad when they're a little bit sad, that sort of thing. And so... I really totally, 100% understand why people would like something like Ascendance of a Bookworm. I really do. I just... I didn't. I didn't, not even a little bit. So, that was a little bit rambly, but I just... I don't know how else to put my thoughts on that. Like, Ascendance of a Bookworm is pretty boring to me. Like, I didn't hate it. Hate's a very strong word. I just did not care about anything and I was bored the whole time, but it, when you look at it in the broader context of when it was released and how, I get why people would like it, and if that's something you're looking for, you might enjoy this, but honestly, I just can't get past the writing bit, and if you can't do that, then maybe check out the anime. I actually did see a couple episodes of that back when it came out, and I, again, I was bored out of my skull, but it's at least easier to get into. Uh, pa Patreon patrons Apo Savalane and Ava Toomer, Brother Santodis, Christopher Quinten, Deanna Dahim, Embis, Emily Miller, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Lawrence Hicks, Lisa Rudakova, Madison Lewis Bennett, Microphone, Rizia Rolla, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Bean, Evacuous Silas, Vevictus. You're all pretty cool. If your name isn't on here, then sign up for Patreon. Give give me money, please. I I need want you more money now and uh, subscribe and channel uh, like video stuff. Bye.